Hi, and welcome back to this tutorial series, where we are going over the various options available to 5th edition campaigns within Fantasy Grounds Unity. In this video, we are going to focus on those options that affect tokens once they are placed on a map, controlling their size, overall map visibility, and various features that control various types of information that can be seen on the token itself. The first option we will cover is the Token GM Show Effects option, which controls if the effects are displayed for the Dungeon Master in the bottom left corner of a token and how much detail is displayed when enabled. The option includes Icons, Icons Hover, Mark, Mark Hover, and Off, with the default option being Icons. The Icon setting will display a unique icon for many of the effects and conditions that exist within 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, and for each effect, a new icon is going to be added to this icon. So if I, for example, decided to drop in a couple of additional effects on this mean lock here, we can see that new icons are being added to the icon itself or the token that happens to be on the uh, map there. The icon is going to be displayed until the effect or condition is removed from the character, NPC, or creature within the combat tracker. And there are a total of five conditions that can be displayed when you're using the effect icon size of standard, which I will get to a little bit later on in the video. If there happen to be more effects than can be displayed on the token, then what's going to happen is, is all of the extras are going to be bundled under a listing within this last icon here. And they are sorted alphabetically, so it shouldn't be too hard to find them. Removing an effect from a creature, character, or NPC will also remove the associated icon from that listing. So you can see it's a very quick way to ascertain what a particular creature, NPC, or character happens to have for active effects. The icons hover option is going to do the exact same thing, except it will only display the icons when you move your mouse over the affected token, otherwise they will not be displayed immediately. So if you're unsure whether a particular creature, NPC, or character happens to have any active effects, all you have to do is hover over that particular token. The mark option is going to move all of the effects and conditions underneath one particular token icon here. And as you can see, it will alphabetically sort them with conditions being listed last and effects being listed first. If you prefer a cleaner token while still being able to view the overall listing of effects and conditions that are in place, then this is going to be the perfect option for you. The mark hover option does once again the exact same thing that the mark option does. The only difference here is you have to hover over the individual tokens in order to be able to see the listing of an effect. So if there are no effects in place on a particular character, hovering ov over them isn't going to list anything. Whereas if there is conditions or effects in place, then hovering over that particular token will display an icon that you can then move your mouse over to get a tooltip showing exactly what effects and conditions are there. The last setting is off. And it doesn't matter whether you hover over the token or whether you are actually clicking or highlighting on that particular token, in neither case will an effect listing show up in here. You have to go to the combat tracker to see what active effects are in place. The next option is called Token GM Show Health option, which controls whether a particular health indicator is displayed on the bottom right or along the side of the token for the Dungeon Master to see. There are going to be five options that you will be able to select from, starting with dot, which is the default, dot hover, off, bar, and bar hover. With the dot setting, you can see that there is a small sort of circular indicator here at the bottom right portion of the token. This is going to be the health indicator, and hovering over it will give you a textual version of the overall damage that this particular creature, NPC, or character has suffered. And that might differ depending on the point of view of the particular creature. Every time a particular actor within the combat tracker suffers damage, the coloration of this particular dot is going to change. It's going to start with a deep green, meaning that that particular token or actor is at full health, and it will slowly transition to disappearing from the icon completely. Before it disappears, it will go to a deep red. And in between that, there will be stages of light green, a yellowish orange, an orange, a light red, and a red, depending on the kind of setting that you have set up for that, which we discussed in the previous videos. It can be a little bit tricky to see when a token represents an ally of a particular player or party group, because there's a slight green tint that is in place in relation to that particular token. However, 
When it comes to NPCs that are hostile or even a different faction, it becomes a little bit easier unless it is going to be set up with a color that happens to match the background associated with that particular faction or state of a particular creature within the combat tracker. Now to show you what the colorization states look like, I'm going to slowly damage this particular mean lock here. And as we can see, as it suffers damage, the coloration of that particular icon changes. And when it's dead, it will go a gray color. When it comes to the bar, it's going to completely disappear, which we will get to once we get there. But any creature that is knocked unconscious or is dying will have this gray icon. Any creature that has simply suffered significant damage is going to have a deep red. The dot hover option is going to do the exact same thing. However, in order for you to see the health indicator, you need to hover your mouse over the token. And if you do it just right, you'll be able to see that you'll be able to get a textual indicator as to what the overall health of that particular token is as well. Whereas if you click out of it, everything disappears. The off option removes the health indicator entirely from the token. And it doesn't matter whether it's for players or whether it's for NPCs or hostile creatures. From a dungeon master's point of view, there will be no status indicator here. When it comes to the bar option, however, we can now see that there is a line that shows up on the right side of the token. And this will slowly get smaller the more damage a particular creature, NPC, or character suffers during this course of a combat scenario. For example, if I were to take this mean lock to say 15 wounds, you can see that the bar has now dropped down to about half the length of the actual health indicator here, and it has also changed color. The bar hover option, also does the exact same thing that the dot hover option is, is that it will require you to hover a mouse over a particular token in order to see the health indicator in relation to that particular creature. The token player show ally effects option works the exact same way as the token GM show effects option does, but it works from the player's point of view. The same settings exist, starting with the default icon setting and continuing on through with the icons hover, mark, mark hover, and off settings. Additionally, this option is only going to show the effects and conditions that affect an ally of a particular player. So our player is this fighter here in this particular case, whereas our druid here is an ally of that particular player. And this setting, when I go through and adjust what the particular state of that particular grouping of options is, changes the point of view in relation to the player. So at this point, I have everything set to off. If I move the player screen to look at a hostile creature that happens to be on the map, and then I make the adjustments to the settings for the show ally effects options, we can see that nothing is changing in relation to that particular token. If you want to see specifics as to what this particular setting option does, I highly recommend you jump back to the token GM show effects option if you haven't already viewed that, as I go into a much more detail in relation to what that group of settings actually does. The token player show ally health option works the exact same way as the token GM show health option does, but once again, it only works from the point of view of the player. And again, the same settings exist in relation to starting with the dot as the default setting. You can then select dot hover, off, bar, or bar hover as your additional options. This is also another setting that only affects the tokens that are classified as allies to the player. And it affects this icon in the bottom right corner of that particular token. If I cycle through all of the options that exist for this particular setting, you will see that it changes all of the information that is being displayed on that particular token. And I'm going to leave this at the dot setting for now. The token player show enemy effects option works the exact same way as the other two options that deal with effects and conditions. Except in this particular case, it deals with the effects and conditions from the point of view of a player looking at a hostile creature in relation to the combat map. The settings are exactly the same as the other options that we have looked at, with the default being icons, then icons hover, mark, mark hover, and off. And once again, if you're curious to know a little bit more detail about those individual settings, I highly recommend you jump to the token GM show effects option that I covered earlier in the video. The next option called token player show enemy health option once again works the exact same way as the two previous settings that we have looked at already that deal with showing the health in relation to a token on a combat map. And once again, 
This is from the player's point of view, not from any other point of view, and it's related to a player looking at a hostile creature, in this case, the mean lock. The health status indicator of a hostile creature is once again controlled with the dot, dot hover, off, bar, and bar hover settings in relation to the other options that we have covered. And if I go through and actually change this, you can see that it adjusts from the player's point of view in relation to what you see on that particular token. And if you want to see how the individual settings affect this particular option, I highly recommend you jump back to the token GM show health option that we'd already covered earlier in this particular video. The token auto scale to grid option changes the default behavior of tokens when they are placed on a map in relation to the scaled size of the square that they are being placed into. There are three settings. 80% of the grid, 100% of the grid, and off, with 80% of the grid being the default option. Effectively, however, it is actually equal to an on or an off kind of setting because even though the 80% or 100% is going to change the size of the token in relation to when it's placed on the map, the functionality when it's set to off is completely different in relation to the behavior of that particular token. And when the setting is effectively on, meaning that it is set to either an 80 or 100% scaled size, then when a medium sized creature is placed on the map, they're going to be scaled to fit within a five by five square. If however, you were to drop a large creature on a particular map that is scaled appropriately, what will happen is it will automatically scale to fit a two by two square of grids, not a one by one, which means that it's going to be taking up a total of 10 by 10 feet in relation to that overall size. Now I'm going to quickly remove all tokens from this map for the time being because I want to show you how this is going to look when you drop something a little bit larger on to the actual map. And I'm going to go ahead and take this brass dragon, which is an ancient brass dragon, which is large and I mean massive. And what you can see here, although it is going to be a little bit harder to see, so one second, there we go, is that with the scale size of 80% of the grid, this circular token here has scaled to take up approximately 80% of this 4x4 grid size. That means it's going to consume almost all of the space related to 16 total squares. If I go ahead and I clear this particular token again and change the setting to be 100% of the grid and I drop the exact same ancient dragon onto the map, you will see that the circular portion of this particular token is actually taking up almost 100% of this particular size here. It's just barely touching the edge of the grid in relation to all of these particular portions of that particular token. Now you might be thinking that this is actually the quote unquote appropriate default size of that particular token and you would be right. However, if I once again remove this particular token and I move the setting to off, watch what happens with this particular token. It is literally the equivalent of a medium sized character, although the effective quote unquote space that it consumes is the 16 square grid. And that's because when you turn that setting off, it will use the default size of the image itself that is used to represent the token, not what you think the size of the creature is. The size of the creature is actually represented by this reddish square that you can see here. The token effect icon size is another group of settings that deals with the effect icons that you can see on a given token in relation to being here at the bottom left portion of the actual token. However, unlike the previous settings that we looked at that deal with the effects and conditions on a particular token, this particular setting is going to change the size of all of those particular effects icons, regardless of whether it's a hostile NPC creature or token or an ally of a player. There are three settings that come into play standard, small, and large. And you may have observed something in relation to this particular listing of the icons here. When it's the standard, you're able to get roughly a total of five effects here. In fact, five is as far as it can go. But when you change it to small, it increases by one to show six, and it cannot go past six. When it goes to large, it can only display three. So if you want to be able to see more effects on a particular NPC token here, and you're not too worried about the size because you can still scroll in to actually get an indication as to what's there, then you can change the setting to small if you really want to be able to see the token itself. The standard is the default, and this is going to be, sorry, that's the default. 
this is going to be what you would normally see in relation to the token, is it would take up a small portion of the bottom, and you see the majority of the token here, whereas when it's larger, it takes up about the same size from a width perspective, maybe a little bit less, but it does take up a little bit more from a height perspective. If you combine this with the other settings that show the individual icons, for example, I'm going to set this all to icons hover, you'll see that the icons are still there, and when you go ahead and change the size of them, you still have to deal with whatever option you have selected for the individual settings here in order to display those particular tokens. So whether it's the mark, whether it's the hovering capability, or whether you've completely set the setting off. If you've turned off all three of these particular settings, then making an adjustment to here is really pointless. The token facing indicator is going to add a new directional arrow to the token, allowing a dungeon master or player to indicate the direction that a particular creature or character is facing. It has two settings, on and off, with off being the default. And when you turn it on, you'll get this little yellow indicator. In this particular case, the indicator is showing that this particular druid is facing north. And in order to change the direction of that, you have to select the token, hold down the shift key, and then use your mouse wheel to change what direction you're trying to indicate that that particular character is facing. This will work from both a player or dungeon master's point of view, and a dungeon master has the ability to control the direction facing indicator of any token, whereas a player only has the ability to modify their own unless another setting is active. You can also see that with this one setting, I have effectively set this indication icon on all of the tokens that happen to be on the map. So this isn't an option that you get to be as quote unquote selective as the other settings that we have looked at earlier in this video. There is one minor issue with this particular setting though. You can see that even though I have this setting off, the indicators are still there. This is something that SmiteWorks is aware of, and in the event that this video comes out before they've addressed this particular issue, there are a couple of workarounds that you have available to you to be able to deal with them. The first option is that you can remove a particular token from the map and then replace it. Let me grab the druid there and the indicator will go away. That's a little bit cumbersome when it comes to addressing each of the individual tokens that happen to be on a particular map at the same time. The other option is simply to close the map in question and then reopen it. And what you will see is that all of the indicators have gone away simultaneously and both the players and the dungeon masters are going to be affected by this problem. In fact, I can show you what the player screen looks like right now. The token party vision and movement setting is another option that has simply an on or an off state with the default being off. This setting affects a player's ability to be able to move another player's token as well as share vision based visibility and lighting sources. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and set this setting to on and then I'm going to load up the player screen so that you can see what that looks like. As we can see in this particular view here, we have two characters. I'm playing one particular character and this particular character is loaded up nowhere because there's no other player that's currently connected. So there's only a portion of this that I can actually show you. However, with this setting on, I have the ability to move this particular player even though I don't own or control that player. And the dungeon master would approve that selection in order to move them forward. And I'm gonna go ahead and move this particular token all the way up to there. So one second here. There we go. I have no idea why the fighter has that particular druid targeted, but anyway. And as we can see here, this particular druid has taken a light source that they happen to have with them in the direction that they have gone, leaving this particular fighter here, which I believe is human, yep, in the dark. Now watch what happens when I turn that setting off. The fighter is going to lose complete visibility in relation to the druid and where they're located. And that's because I have now unshared the light source that that particular druid had, as well as what visibility that particular druid was seeing around them. This fighter can't see that, even though if I were to give this particular druid, sorry, fighter, a dark vision capability here, they still would not be able to see what the druid is able to see. Now, there's something that I want to point out in relation to this particular token. Even though our fighter is down here and they know, have no visibility in relation to seeing in the dark, with party vision, there's a shared vision of what this particular druid is able to see being shared with the fighter. But I also have not selected that fighter. 
As soon as I select that fighter, I'm now going to see exactly what the fighter is only able to see, not what the druid is sharing with me through their system. So as this particular character moves about, you will see that certain things change and certain things don't. So any region that they can't see remains dark, whereas any region that they can see in once they're in a light source will light up a little bit. And when I deselect that particular character again, what will happen is that now the party's shared vision comes back into play and they'll be able to see what other areas everyone else can see. So even though the human can't actually see in this particular room down here, they're able to see it now with that shared vision on. As soon as I turn that off, that goes away. They will be restricted to only see what their character is able to see and nothing else, even if they are selected. And they can no longer select the druid in order of being able to control that particular character. And the last option that we're going to be going over in this particular video is called Token Show Name. And it controls the visibility of a given creature or character name for any token on the map that is linked to the combat tracker. There are a total of four settings that are available. Tooltip, which is the default. Title, Title Hover, or Off. With the Tooltip setting, when you hover your mouse over a particular token, you're going to see the name of that particular creature or character. And that is because the tooltip pops up that little hovering box that contains that information as part of that particular process. It doesn't matter whether the token that you're hovering your mouse over is an ally, a hostile creature, or a faction that you're not directly associated with, but also is not necessarily hostile with your particular character. And it also works for both the player and the dungeon master's point of view. Everything and everyone sees the same thing. When I change this to the title option, we can see that there is now a title that pops up over the top of those particular tokens. And if your name happens to be longer than what it can fit on this particular token, title, I should say, it won't be able to complete that. You'll see a dot, dot, dot. And it doesn't matter whether you're using title or title hover, if the length of that particular name happens to be longer than what it can fit above the token, it will always show that ellipses. When, however, it is off, it doesn't matter whether you hover over a particular token or whether you select it, you won't see the actual title of that particular token's representative actor. So whether it's a hostile creature, whether it's an ally, or whether it's your own character, if you happen to be a player. I have run into some situations where when this is set to tooltip and then it's changed to the title, sometimes the tooltip, yeah, like right here, we can see that the tooltip to the druid is still showing. All you have to do is once again, close out that particular map or image, pop it open, and then the tooltip itself will no longer be visible. So once again, SmiteWorks is aware of this particular problem. And in the event that it is still not resolved by the time you see this particular video, you now have an option to be able to go through and control what happens there. However, this does cover the last set of options specific to the tokens or more specifically within this section of the campaign options listing. So I'm going to end this video here and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.